The only way in this area to create jobs is through industry. He was born in Kippenheim, Germany, in the summer of 1926. Stefan Wertheimer, son of a musician and a decorated veteran of the First World War. In 1936, with the Nazis coming to power, they fled Germany to a new land. I didn't laugh, it's, uh, my parents took me. I was 10 years old, didn't ask me. They emigrated to Palestine, then under the British mandate. At 18, he joined the fledging Israeli army. The state of Israel has hardly been born when it had a fight for its independence, and Stefan, who changed his name to Stef, joined the first class of the newly established Israel Air Force Flight School. Although he graduated as a pilot, the Army wanted to use his other talent, metal processing. He was charged with the all-important task of weapons development for the Israel military industries. In those days, no one could imagine that this would become his path to peace. This area needs jobs and power won't change it. When the State of Israel came into being and the battles ended, Steph built a small workshop producing metal cutting tools in his backyard. In time, this first tiny shop grew into Iskar, a global company, one of the leaders of the world's metal processing industry. Car makers, shipbuilders, aerospace industries all use tools made by Iskar. For years, Iskar was run as a family enterprise by Steph Wertheimer and his son Eitan. Only recently, the company won its greatest vote of confidence when the world's foremost investor, Warren Buffett, bought the controlling interest and became a senior partner in the company. I am impressed. <laughs> no, I, we don't have anything like this. this. This is incredible. It is a model of advanced industry, ran and staffed in a surprising partnership of coexistence. Our work is in Iskar, never violent. They have no time. They have to deliver products on time and good quality. However, for all its great success, Iskar alone just wasn't enough. Wertheimer wanted to bring about a change on a scale larger than his immediate environment and do it in the only way he knew how, through industry. Steph, me, ten, Lorabim, Odesrim, you come ocha. The ambitious project that occupies most of his time in the past 25 years is the creation of industrial parks. An industrial park is a code name for a site containing several factories, educational facilities, and a hothouse for young entrepreneurs. The parks are characterized by environmentally clean and well cared for locations and patronage of artistic and cultural pursuits for the welfare of the employees and their families. This park has a quiet atmosphere, a nice atmosphere. All the parks are located in the periphery. All provide much needed employment for both Jews and Arabs. It is a different, more constructive model, presaging the change in the political climate throughout the Middle East. 71 years after fleeing from Germany, he returned in 2008 to receive the Buber Rosenzweig Medal. Aber dazu brauchen wir Menschen, wie Stief Wertheimer. Menschen, die für ihre Idee leben und die ihre Idee mit viel Einsatz, auch mit Pragmatismus, lebendig werden lassen. He used this opportunity as well to promote the project he believes in so strongly. Frieden wird kommen wenn die Flüchtlingslager Arbeit haben. How can this happen? This is the plan we are going to present to you in the course of the next few minutes. We shall take you on an unexpected journey to a familiar region. A journey around the Mediterranean basin, following the trail of the industrial parks. We will show you how, with the aid of a vision, one can build a different reality in this troubled region. Power and army is not the solution for a peace. Causes for conflict are countless, and the Middle East has them aplenty. One blaming oil, one blaming religion, one blaming whatever you want to blame. But there is only one way to make peace, lowering the level of violence. 
a solution that has already proven its effectiveness in other conflict areas throughout the world. When I first became involved in Northern Ireland, the leaders didn't talk. The U.S. Senator George Mitchell mediated the peace accords achieved in Northern Ireland. He has headed a special workshop for leaders from Israel, Jordan, Turkey, and the Palestinian Authority. They all came to Tefin in Israel to learn about the principles of the industrial park operation. The countries of this region have to become part of that. They have to do what the countries of East Asia did in the past half century. Friction only can be solved if the income level would come to be similar and we all would have a new enemy or a new friend or a new goal which should be the world market. The model is to be found in the countries that have already managed to extricate themselves from similar conflict situations. Countries like Ireland, South Korea and Singapore that succeeded by using the engine of industry in transforming themselves into islands of stability and peace. Wertheimer's vision is based on a simple fact that relates to the GDP of each country. When a country's GDP passes the benchmark of $6,000 per capita, it has no interest in harboring terrorists and allowing them to operate from its territory. The borders flare up in the regions where the GDP is below $6,000 per capita, in countries like Syria, Egypt, and areas controlled by the Palestinian Authority. How do you encourage a country to develop? Wertheimer's industrial parks can serve as an excellent model for that. At a site just 10 kilometers away from the border between Israel and Lebanon, Wertheimer has created his first industrial park, Tefin. It's the only area where half the people are Arabs and half the people are Jews. And this area, we were able to create quite a number of interesting jobs and had a lot of people, Arabs and Jews, being educated to be competitive with the world market. Tefin was the first groundbreaking site, followed by five more such parks, all built on a common principle. We all talk about the same thing and the same issue, how to bring people from despair to success. I have a common interest. They all want their kids to stay in yeah. this area and have a job. And if they have a job in this area, they're all happy. The aim of an industrial park hothouse is to select young entrepreneurs and provide them with the optimal conditions required to develop their productive ventures. The types of industries involved are unlimited. They range from the most advanced to the most traditional, like Softa Jamilia's soap factory a small family business that became a worldwide exporter of a unique olive-based soap. The parks house young businesses side by side with branches of giant multinational corporations, such as Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, Motorola, SanDisk and BMC. They provide employment for thousands of residents of the areas around the park, people of all ethnicities, races and creeds. To date, Wertheimer has single-handedly established five such parks in Israel and an additional one, the first one of its kind in another country, in Gebze, Turkey. Cost of building such a park is less than half of that of a fighter jet. We don't have oil, and we don't have land, and we don't have water. So the only thing left over to us is industry, and industry which can be exported and allows us to be a part of the free world. Just think what another 20 of such industrial parks could achieve. Islands of sanity shrewdly distributed throughout the Middle East. This has to be the world's answer to refugee camps and to conflict points that no real effort has been made for 60 years to improve their condition. This is our area, it's our direct neighborhood, so we cannot close our eyes. 
The Turkish State Minister Ali Baba Khan participated in the special workshop conducted in Israel and has pledged his support for the idea according to which peace begins with economics. The economic relations, the trade relations between the countries in the region will eventually help the stability region overall. It is in our hands. The model is here, now, and it has proven its worth again and again with the establishment of each new industrial park. The place is not important. The people are fine. There are no bad people. There are people that don't have a, a future or people that do have a future. And once you create a future, things happen. Those who join us today will take part in laying the foundations for peace in the Mediterranean basin to conducting the war on terror with the only weapon that offers a human alternative. There is no such thing as a conflict that can't be ended. Conflicts are created, conducted, and sustained by human beings. They can be ended by human beings. There is no better way to bring people closer together than creating for them a place of work they can be proud of, than building a common interest important enough to be cherished and guarded by all. Until now, Wertheimer has worked alone, but in order to continue the success, it must be disseminated throughout the Near East. This can be accomplished only with a massive involvement of the international community. The model is already in place. It only needs to be adopted elsewhere to fill the region of conflict with islands of hope.